For the past few years, I've been seeing all of these teacher tag videos where some of the biggest name teachers on YouTube would all answer the same questions and post their video out on the same day and it was super fun and I always learned about other teacher YouTubers from watching these teacher tag videos. But I've never been a part of one and I want to be a part of things. And so Darren Nakakihara is one of the other teacher YouTubers that geeks out over audio and video, maybe even more than I do. And he's usually the one that sets up a lot of these teacher tag videos because he's connected to literally every teacher YouTuber and I messaged him and said, hey, why don't we do a summer teacher tag video? And we brainstormed a few questions for everyone to answer. And so welcome to my first teacher tag video. I've done it before, but it's nice to be like on the ground level, releasing it at the same time as everybody else. Howdy, ladies and gents. If you're new here, my name is Tom. My channel is all about helping middle school STEM teachers design an engaging classroom experience for their students and a fulfilling teaching experience for themselves. In the description, you'll see a link to all of the other teachers that are doing this tag, as well as the questions that I'm going to be answering with timestamps next to them. So that way, if you're like, I don't really care what's on your summer reading list, Tom, but I do wanna find out what your morning routine is, you can feel free to jump around. Where and what do you teach? I'm in Austin, Texas. This year I taught middle school math, science, and robotics. Next year, it's just going to be math and robotics and I'm announcing it for the first time on this channel. I am also going to be the director of ed tech and innovation at my school. Super excited about that. How much of your year was fully remote versus hybrid versus fully in person. We were remote all the way through February. We were supposed to come back at the end of February to start hybrid learning, but we had that crazy winter storm, if you heard about it, where Texas basically shut down because it was like five degrees here for a week. And so that pushed our plans back about a week because we didn't have classes at all because a lot of people didn't even have power or water. So we were hybrid from the last week of February through the end of the year with a few more students coming to school as the year progressed. What do you like to do on that first weekend of summer break. Before the first weekend, I really like that moment right at the end of the last day of class where you're just like, this moment is the point in which I have the maximum amount of summer vacation left. <laughs> And it's a good moment. But that first weekend, I think this first weekend, we are actually going to see some friends that we haven't seen in over a year, and that's gonna be fun. How does your summer morning routine differ from your school year morning routine? I'm an early riser, and I still wake up early during the summers. This summer, the morning routine's going to change a little bit in that I am going to be returning to my jujitsu class that happens at 6 a.m. in the morning. I haven't been since last February, but now that I am vaccinated and my county has a pretty high vaccination rate, I feel more comfortable going back. And so I'll be doing that most weekday mornings. That's not so much of a like school versus summer situation, but more of like a COVID situation. Since the class is at 6 a.m., I'll be home back around 7.30 before my wife has to leave for work since she's still working. She's a pediatrician. And I am going to be watching our little one-year-old for the summer. I think it's gonna be a different ball game since the last summer I watched her. She was only about four months old. And this summer, she is about 16 months old. <laughs> There's a big difference between a four month and a 16 month. So one of the things I think we'll do a lot of mornings though, she really likes to be in the stroller, the running stroller when I go for a run. She likes being outside. And so I think a lot of mornings we'll go on a run before it gets too hot during the day. What's on your to read list? I like reading, but it takes a lot of effort for me to sit down and read and not check my phone after every third paragraph. But here's what I'm hoping to finish this summer. I'm currently reading Primal Branding. I'd like to finish that up. That's more of like, what is it about creating a brand, not only online, but just in general that really resonates with people. And so I wasn't gonna read it, but it was recommended by like three trusted sources. I'm like, okay, I probably need to read it. Talk Like Ted, it is a book on public speaking. I have been doing more conferences and professional development all virtually, but I would like to refine my public speaking skills, not only for the virtual stage, but also to start doing some more in-person speaking and make it good, make it like a TED talk. And my wife just finished Hunt, Gather, Parent, and she really liked it. The general premise is, and Western civilization, we do too much for our kids, either because we think we are helping them or it's inconvenient to let them do things on their own, like trying to learn how to eat. And it's like, oh, it's such a big mess. Let me just do it for you. But this is about empowering your kids, even at a young age, to do things and to be contributing members of the family, not the entire focus of the family. What's on your watch list? Last summer, I was watching the Babies documentary on Netflix, which was pretty interesting. So I might watch a few more of those. I was also 
watching the video game documentary called High Score, which is about like the evolution and story of the early video games, particularly like in the 90s when I was totally into video games. I don't play as much now, but I watched a few of those episodes last summer and just haven't watched it since, mainly because me and my wife just want to watch Modern Family at night before we go to bed and we're not too into like documentaries at night. So, so it'd be fun to watch a few of those. What have you been putting off for months that you hope to do this summer? Deep cleaning of my Google Drive, like all three of them. I have my school one, I've got like my business one, I've got my personal one, and the school one is just full of a bunch of junk that I don't need anymore and it's not organized. I have folders, but the folder structure doesn't even really make sense anymore, so I am so excited to just sit and clean out my Google Drive accounts. Do you have a summer job or a side hustle? My YouTube content is part of my teacher consultant brand and business, which includes online courses and professional development. And so I'm revising one of my online courses. I have one that it's marketed as a course on how to teach kids about money, but it's not really about financial literacy. It's really about classroom culture where kids have class jobs and they get paid in classroom money and there are financial literacy lessons there, but it's about the the culture culture and the things that, that, that get accomplished for you as the teacher and the real life skills that the students learn in this classroom economy. And so I'm rebranding that so it, it makes sense and people aren't like, oh, I don't teach financial literacy, so that's not a course for me. It's like, oh, I want really good classroom culture, 21st century classroom culture, and so maybe this is for me. So there's a lot that goes in with that from the branding, the copy of the landing page, setting up email systems, and it's a lot of fun and it's re-energizing. It's just a lot of little things that need to happen to make it work. And so I really wanna focus on some of that work this summer. What's your ideal self-care summer day? I'd still probably wake up early. I'd love to do a jujitsu class because I like doing jujitsu. Breakfast with friends in a diner that have like the really thick coffee mugs. I'd like to go on a run with my wife and my baby. At some point in the day, I would love to just be laying on the couch, drinking a Topo Chico, eating beef jerky and hot Cheetos, watching YouTube videos for 30 to 40 minutes. Any more than that, I kind of start feeling gross. I'd love to make a video at some point in the day. I really like making videos. I've been making videos on YouTube for like five years. And any night with either TV and popcorn with my wife after the baby goes down or with us out with friends, eating outside, perfect weather, good food, that'd be a good day. I like that my ideal day is like super within reach. Like I could do all of that pretty easily like on a Friday as opposed to where I'm like, my ideal day is like on a beach in Hawaii. That's definitely not my ideal day. What's your favorite thing to do outside? I love going on a run, listening to podcasts. Typically business or self-development podcasts. What is your favorite thing to do inside? Something that I can do regularly inside is just a nice non-rushed breakfast with the family. Good coffee bacon, eggs, or maybe some breakfast tacos. Sun's just coming out, I love that. Something that I like to do inside that I only do once a year and we just started last year, it's, but it's been become one of my favorite things is me and my wife do a yearly podcast where we just sit down and we interview each other for an hour and just talk about what our life is in that moment. And we started it last year, like a month after Audrey was born and we did it again back in March of this year. And it's really fun, it's like totally uninterrupted, we don't have our phones, and we're just sitting and talking and recording our conversation. And it feels really natural and doesn't feel weird. And it's been really fun to do that. And we only do it once a year. What professional development do you want to do? With my new role of Director of EdTech and Innovation, I really want to start getting ready to support my colleagues in the realms of educational technology and innovation and what that will look like, whether that's leading PD or meeting one-on-one -on -one with people. And in my math class, my goal this next year is to try to make my classroom as student run as possible. Literally like, how can I get my classroom to run where if I didn't show up, things would still happen and learning would still be going on. So part of that is kind of diving into the resources from the Modern Classrooms Project, which is all about self-paced learning with video lessons and guided notes and assessment tracking and all that. But it's also gonna be revisiting some of my classroom jobs and systems that I have in place. How can I set this up so it runs without my involvement? And so I'm pretty excited about that. If you're a teacher on summer break, I want you to pick one question from this list and leave that answer in the comments down below and then see what other people are saying. I think it could help build the, the community here and I think it could be a lot of fun. Check out the description for links to the other teachers videos that are part of this teacher tag. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video and down in the comments when you answer one of the questions.